Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about the uh, forward markets and also discuss the covered interest parity. Now, these forward markets are a part of the derivative markets. And these derivative markets exist because you wish to hedge against the market risk. The market risks happens if there are fluctuations and changes which exist in commodity prices in stock prices and uh, in the foreign exchange markets. Because uh, this is a course on international trade, so we will discuss these derivative markets and, and concentrate on the forward markets and how uh, forward markets and how forward markets function and how forward prices are determined. So, uh, let us start with the covered interest parity. The covered interest parity is the counterpart of the open interest parity that we saw while we were dealing with the spot markets. The open interest parity said that the expected rate of depreciation is a function of the differential interest rates. Now, this covered interest parity relates the forward premiums and the forward discounts to the differential interest rates. The foreign currency is at forward premium, if the forward rate is greater than the spot rate. The foreign currency is in discount, forward discount, if the forward rate is less than the spot rates. So, uh, let us see what covered interest parity says. So, again if you have a rupee to invest, you would get a return of 1 plus r at the end of the year, if you invest it in your own country. The other option is that you take this 1 rupee outside, by converting it into the foreign currency using the exchange rate. So, 1 by pi is the corresponding value of 1 rupee in terms of the foreign currency. If you invest it in their banks, then the return that you would get is 1 by pi 1 plus r star. Now, this is the return that you would get at the end of the year in the foreign country. Now, you want to bring it back. Now, instead of using the pi e that we did when we were discussing the open interest differential, we use the forward rate to convert the foreign currency into the local currency. Now, if this is greater than 0, then it is worthwhile to invest it in the foreign bonds. Now, what you need to define is delta, which is the forward premium, if delta is greater than 0. So, this is equal to pi f So, then 1 by pi 1 plus r star pi f is delta pi plus pi.
So, <coughs> what the covered interest differential is saying, this is the covered interest differential. that even though in the foreign country the interest rates may be lower, but you may still be prompted to invest your money in the foreign bonds, if you expect that the foreign currency is being sold at a premium, which is delta greater than 0. If this is greater than 0, then the return that you would expect is delta plus r star. In the open interest differential, you had expected that even though you are getting the lower interest rate, but if you expected the foreign currency to appreciate, then the returns that you would get would be pi hat plus r star. Here, if you expect that the foreign currency would be sold at a premium, premium would mean that the, the, the forward rate is greater than the spot rate, then the returns that you would get would be delta plus r star minus r greater than 0. Now, the covered interest parity follows, in this case you do not even have to assume that the investors are risk neutral. Even if you find this, then there will be incentive to invest in foreign bonds. What will happen eventually will be that the, because the money goes to the foreign country, so the R, R star goes down, R increases and delta which is pi f minus pi by pi, if pi goes up, then the delta goes down, delta goes down, r star goes down, r goes up eventually, even for a risk averse person, yeah, it, you will find that delta plus r star minus r is equal to 0, approximately equal to 0. So, delta is equal to r minus r star. So, your forward premium is determined by the differential interest rates. Now, uh, so uh, we need to have a closer look at the forward markets to understand when you would have delta greater than 0, when will you have forward premiums, when will you have forward discounts, when will the foreign currency be in forward premium, when will it be in, in the discount. So, then let us relook at, uh, let us look at the the forward markets. Here uh, on the y axis you have the forward premium. So, now we are looking at the forward markets. This is demand and supply of foreign currency. You have you have a counterpart of the supply curve, which is the F s curve and you have a counterpart of the demand curve, which is the F d curve. Now, here in the forward markets, now you need to distinguish between investors and speculators. Investors are driven by the covered interest differential, which is delta plus r star minus r. They are ready to put money in the forward markets, provided there is a, a, a covered interest differential. But then there are speculators who are in 
demand for foreign currency, who are speculating about the changes in the foreign exchange markets and they also demand foreign currency in the forward markets. They are driven by the delta and the expected rate of change in the exchange rates. Initially, at this point at 0, you have pi hat equal to 0, you have delta equal to 0. It is a situation of equilibrium, where the, the forward demand is equal to the forward supply and uh, you do not see any, any changes. Now, again like when we were discussing the spot markets, we will assume 1 and increase in interest rates and second changes in the expectation. Now, before discussing these changes, which will shift the F s and the F d curves, we should first understand why is the F s curve upward sloping and why is the F d curve downward, downward sloping. Now, think of this F d curve, if you find that delta is less than 0. So, delta is pi f minus pi by pi, this is less than 0. So, pi f is less than pi. Now, you are a speculator, pi dot is 0, this pi hat is 0, but delta is less than 0. That means, the foreign currency is being sold at discount. So, pi f is less than pi. Now, see what speculators would do. They would buy foreign currency at the forward markets and sell it at a higher rate in the spot markets later on. Remember the forward markets, forward markets are those where, wherein you decide about the price today for a transaction which will be done at some future date. So, look how speculators uh, will make profits as soon as they find that the foreign currency is being sold at a discount, where pi f is less than pi, they would buy foreign currency at the forward markets and then sell it at a future date at a higher price in the spot in the spot markets. Now, now think that, uh, so, so you see this F d curve, this is the demand for the foreign currency in the forward markets. So, as soon as delta is less than 0, so if this is forward premium, anything which is less than 0 would be forward discount. So, when delta becomes less than 0, there will be a demand for the foreign currency in the forward markets. What would have happened if delta would have been greater than 0? Foreign currency is now being sold at a premium. Okay. So, in that case, pi f is greater than pi e, than pi e. So, then what will the speculators do? They will buy foreign currency in the spot markets and then sell it at the forward markets. Right? So, in that case, the excess demand, the uh, sorry, the demand for the foreign currency in the forward markets would be negative. Okay. So, that is the reason that the F d curve is downward sloping. And because speculators, like earlier we had assumed that they are not risk neutral, they are also risk averse. So, uh, if they are risk averse, the F d curve is 
downward sloping. Had it been a case that they were risk neutral, any differential they would have completely switched from one asset to another asset. But they are hesitant to do it because they are risk neutral. So, F D curve is downward sloping, it is not horizontal. So, that is when you are talking of the speculation and when I talk of risk, risk is about the movement in the in the exchange rate, it is it is that risk which is involved, the changes in the exchange rates. So, uh, and then uh, there is another set of risk which is involved in the forward markets is that at maturity, uh, there may be a default, the you may say no I will not, I will not give the money. So, there are a set of risks which are involved, but in here you have the case of default, default risk and you have the risk of the changes in the exchange rate. Because in the uncovered interest value that we saw, there the risk is you are, you have expectations that is your you are actually speculating in the market, but in the forward markets there is no speculation involved. I mean, you have set a rate at which you will sell your foreign currency or buy the foreign currency. Yeah, but, but the riskiness is in terms of the, the movement of the exchange rates in context with the forward markets. The spot and the forward rates. So, here you are, when, when I say that the speculators are driven by delta and and, and pi hat, I am worried uh, as a speculator, because you are speculating about what would happen to the expected rate of change of exchange rate. So, it is the risk which is involved here and there is also the risk when I say it is default risk at maturity, there is a possibility that the other party refuses to give the money. Uh, because it is it is a deal between say A and B and there is no third third party which is overlooking into this. So, there is always a pos possibility of a default risk. So, you may be in the business. So, one thing what the speculators are need to be careful is about the default risk and then these changes which happen in the exchange rate. So, the F D curve is downward sloping. Look at the F S curve, these are uh, the, the, the forward supply curve of the investors. So, this is of the investors. When we are discussing the open interest parity, the E D curve was for both investors and speculators and the supply curve E S curve were the other market participants. That means, that uh, the, the other countries which would need foreign exchange to buy your own goods, that, that excess supply, that supply of foreign currency was coming from the others. And here in your own country, it was the investor speculators who were demanding foreign exchange. Now, as soon as you talk about the forward markets, you need to make a distinction between investors and speculators. These speculators speculate about what is happening in spot and forward markets and if there is a differential, then uh, they want to take uh, arbitrage opportunities. You can also think it in this manner that if both uh, say covered interest parity and open interest parity holds. So, in that case you would have pi a pi f is equal to pi e, if both covered and open interest parity holds, but then there is always a possibility that pi f is greater than pi e or pi f is less than pi expected. Now, in this case they would buy at forward, sell it in spot. Here, they would buy in, in the spot and sell it in the forward. So, whenever there is, uh, uh, there is uh, a 
a differential pr price between spot and forward, someone has to take that arbitrage opportunity and that is speculators. And these investors are the ones who would like to invest in foreign bonds. They are driven by the covered interest differential, which is the which is which is del plus r star minus r. So, here where r is equal to r star, r is equal to r star, delta is 0, there is no incentive to supply the foreign currency in the forward markets. It is like an equilibrium. The demand is 0, because pi hat is 0, delta is 0. So, so, so it is like an equilibrium, where demand is equal to supply is equal to 0. Now, if this delta becomes greater than 0, then this goes up, if this goes up. So, if delta is greater than 0, there is a covered interest differential. So, you would like to invest your money in the, in the forward bonds and there is uh, 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 an increase in the supply of foreign exchange for in the forward markets. So, then uh, given this situation, let us see what happens if there is an increase in interest rates. So, we are here r is r star, delta is 0, it is an equilibrium situation and then there is an increase in interest rates. If there is an increase in interest rates, look right at the beginning what will happen is these investors, you had r is equal to r star and you had delta equal to 0 and now r star goes up. If r star goes up, you would see a rightward shift of the F s curve. you see a rightward shift of the f s curve. So, the investors would like to increase the supply of foreign exchange in the forward markets, because the covered interest differential has gone up. But what will happen also is that at the end, you would see that the forward markets, you would see that in the forward markets, the foreign currency is being sold at a price which is lower than the spot market, the spot price. So, you see a forward discount. Now, when you have a forward discount, you would have delta less than 0. So, speculators wish to buy the foreign currency at the forward markets in the hope that they would sell it at a higher price in the spot markets. So, there is one party who wish to eventually wish to demand that foreign currency at the forward markets and there is one party which is investors who wish to supply that much of foreign exchange at the forward market. How will they do it if they have to supply that much of forward, uh, if they have to supply that much of currency in the forward markets? Look at investors, see what has happened. This covered interest differential has gone up. Okay, so, there is an incentive to put the money in the foreign bonds. So, they would buy the money in the, um, in the spot market, buy the foreign currency in the spot market to do what? To supply it, to supply the foreign currency in the forward markets. Okay. So, someone is supplying, there will be an excess supply and that is being met by the excess demand in the, uh, by the speculators. So, eventually you would see that that excess supply is being met by the excess demand by the speculators. Further, 
can you say something about what will happen to the reserves in the foreign foreign country now as soon as so i'll repeat again see what happened r was equal to r star delta was zero this was the equilibrium r star went up so investors wanted to put money in the foreign bonds so they would buy foreign currency in the spot market to 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 sell it in the forward markets okay so so here you need to make a distinction spot and forward so you buy it in the spot because you want to put the money in the foreign bonds and then you want to utilize this money to supply it in the forward markets so there is an excess supply and this excess supply is being met by speculators because speculators are now driven by the fact that the 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 for the foreign currency is now selling at forward discount so whenever you have forward discount there will be an excess demand for foreign currency in the forward markets so there is excess supply in the foreign markets there is excess demand it's becoming eventually equal and so is this is the new equilibrium uh, situation where you had you had excess supply which has been met by excess demand in the in the okay there's something more which is happening when the foreign interest rates went up and you wanted to put money in foreign bonds you you demanded money in the spot markets you demanded foreign currency in the spot markets now see what will happen when you demand foreign currency in the in the domestic markets the demand for foreign currency would go up there will be depreciation here and if it's a fixed exchange rate you would lose reserves your own country would lose reserves but the foreign country would gain reserves because if it's depreciation here there will be appreciation there so so see right at the beginning you would see that the reserves in foreign currency in foreign country going up but then there is something happens eventually when uh, the foreign currency is been sold at a price lower than the spot price there is an excess demand for the foreign currency in the forward markets okay excess demand in the in in this would mean excess supply in the spot markets so excess supply would mean that there would be uh, appreciation here but a depreciation in the foreign country so that would mean that the the reserves which had went up initially would see a decline in reserves in the foreign country so all these do have an impact on the reserves of the foreign currency both here and in the foreign country let me explain this point again right at the beginning see uh, there was a shock the shock was an increase in interest rates so when you increase the interest rates the this went up covered interest differential covered interest differential means that it's worthwhile to put money in foreign bonds so the investors would buy bonds from foreign currency so there will be an excess demand for foreign currency in your own country so you would lose reserves they would gain reserves okay that's the initial thing but then whatever happened because the fs curve shifted down and the foreign currency went into discount there was then as a result the speculators who want to gain from this arbitrage opportunity would like to buy foreign currency in the forward markets and then sell it in the spot markets at a later stage so when you sell foreign currency in the in the spot markets at a later stage 
it means that you that means your country would gain reserves the other country would lose reserves so that same that foreign country initially gained reserves and then it lost reserves because of all these things which are happening in the forward market so what i'm trying to say is that in this complex world where one party is trying to gain from arbitrage opportunities there's another party who wants to put the money because of the differential because of the profitable opportunities all these tend to have an impact on what's happening in uh, uh, in the f foreign exchange markets what's happening with the reserves okay so uh, that's what happens if there's an increase in interest rates let's bring in expectations now okay so think about it that what will happen now if you bring in expectations remember how we brought in expectations there when we were discussing the spot markets we brought in expectations there where when we said okay after an years time it will be a difficult time for india uh, we would expect that our currency would depreciate for various reasons may, maybe because there is global recession or uh, maybe because there are there is some war going on maybe uh, in in future that would have an impact on our foreign exchange market we would expect our currency to depreciate because there will be an increase or surge in imports because of some war in gulf we are not able to get the oil so uh, uh, the 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 price of oil goes up there's a surge in um, in the imports of oil because the price has gone up it means losing more foreign exchange so this is what was going on in the mind of the market participants this is what happens if you expect that your currency would depreciate in future now the same things th bring in the same thing here and concentrate on this term which is pi hat which is pi e minus pi by pi so if you have to bring in the same expectations now you would expect that this pi e would go up so you expect that the foreign currency would depreciate your currency would depreciate after a years time so if this goes up this pi hat goes up if pi hat goes up see what speculators would do now there's no change in delta but you you see that pi hat has gone up what do you think would the speculators do if they expect that your currency would depreciate how will it affect the fd curve the 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 the, the demand curve for the foreign exchange in the forward markets this has gone up so then what do you think will happen to the fd curve why would it uh, what do you think will will the demand for foreign currency in the forward markets go up why and why and why so remember this delta and pi hat something has happened to pi hat so this has gone up so if you are comparing delta and pi hat or you are comparing pi e and pi f and you expect pi e to be greater than pi f you know what speculators would do they would tend to buy foreign currency in the forward market in the hope that they would sell it at a higher rate in the spot markets so that's the re reason that the fd curve shifts to the right and when it shifts to the right 
there are speculators who want who are demanding foreign currency in the forward markets if there has to be an equilibrium condition someone has to supply it and that someone are none other than the investors who as soon as they find that the foreign currency is being sold at forward premium they would supply that foreign currency in the forward markets. So, there was some imbalance created initially because pi e was greater than pi s. So, speculators uh, demanded foreign currency in the forward markets in the hope that they would sell it in the spot markets at a later stage. But this demand is now being met by speculators who find that the foreign currency is being sold at the forward premium. So, they provide the necessary supply. So, you eventually will find that the, uh, the foreign currency is being sold at now the forward premium and this is the new equilibrium. At this point, as I said you, you have a covered interest differential because you have delta which is greater than 0. It is not this situation, had it been this situation if the forward premium had gone to this stage, then there would not be any incentive to put the money because in that case you would have seen that delta and pi hat would have been same. So, then there would be no covered interest differential, this would, uh, this, would, this would be the equilibrium situation. But because delta has not gone beyond this, delta is still here and uh, it is it's lower than the, the exchange rates. So, you still see a covered interest differential someone is demanding foreign currency in the forward markets, the investors are providing this at, at this rate, this forward premium rate. So, this is the, this, this is the new equilibrium when you see the changes in the expectations. So, in the spot markets, the changes in the exchange rates were a function of not only the differential interest rates, but expectations. This shows that this forward premium or forward discount may be due to changes in the interest rates and changes in the expectations. So, as a common man, it is little uh, difficult, you have to prick your mind to understand when a, when a person asks you why do you see a forward premium, why do you see a forward discount or someone can ask you why are forward rates different from spot rates, why are forward rates greater than spot rates, why are forward rates less than spot rates. So, then you need to uh, of course, uh, discuss the forward markets and like in any other market you have a demand curve and a supply curve. So, there is a demand curve, but this demand curve is by a specific participant which are speculators who want to uh, gain from the arbitrage opportunities and there are investors who want to put money for profitability. So, these two participants interact to decide about the forward premium and forward discount. Yeah, so, uh, F D curve can change because of the changes in delta and pi hat and then you need to compare. So, so here I brought the change because pi hat I, I made changes here. So, pi hat is pi e minus pi by pi. So, it could have changed because of the changes here right. If you want to think
think little more if there was no full anticipation of the changes in the exchange rates. So, then suddenly you find that this has gone up, then what would have happened to pi hat? This would have gone down. So, pi e this pi hat pi e lower than pi f. So, then you would buy in the in the spot markets and sell forward markets. What do you think will happen to the F D curve a leftward shift and then there will be a discount and then once then if there is a discount <coughs> and they, if there is a discount what will happen to then investors rather than putting money in the foreign bonds foreigners would put money here right. Yeah, negative supply and then negative demand. So, uh, just uh, you can you can think about it or there is you have the covered interest differential which is delta plus r star minus r. So, what hap what would have happened if this would have gone up right, then you would have covered interest differential would you, which, which would have been negative. So, f s curve instead of shifting to the right would shift to the left instead of this happening you could have always saw an f s curve like this. Right. Okay. So, uh, this is just a small uh, I just flagged the issues relating to forward markets. If this would have been discussed in a management course you would have gone into the nitty gritties of how the forward market functions and uh, they would have a separate set of books. For example, they would like to uh, suggest a book by uh, Shapiro, which is multinational financial management or you, you seen Hull's book, which is quite good as far as the derivative markets are concerned, because then you have options, you have futures and then if you look at the nitty gritties of how the forward contracts work, if you can refer to the handouts that I have given, please see that the exhibit 5.6, exhibit 5.6 hedging a future payment with a forward contract. So, your home country is U S, the foreign country is pound. Now, uh, what you are expecting is that the pound uh, may appreciate in future. So, as an importer, if you expect that your foreign currency will appreciate or your domestic currency would depreciate, then it would mean that you have to shell out more of foreign currency in future. It is like saying 1 US dollars was 55, tomorrow if it becomes 1 US dollar to be 60, it is the importers who have to hedge against this risk, because for 1 US dollar of thing that they are importing, now uh, tomorrow uh, they have to pay instead of 55 in rupees 60. right? So, you want to hedge against this risk. So, then you say okay, let me now decide about the price today for the transaction that we will do after a month's time or two months time or six months time or, or one month or, 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 or after a year. So, you hedge against this by putting your money in the forward markets that okay, I will deliver this to you that is to the Britishers if, the, if you are in US. I will deliver this this many pounds to you, but please see that you decide about the price today. Okay. That is like entering in the forward contracts. So, uh, say uh, uh, 1.71 and you would have expected that uh, the pound would appreciate to 1.75 and you find that the forward rates are 1.72. Okay. So, pi e is 1.75 to a pound, forward rate is 1.72 dollar 1.72 for a pound 
and your spot rates today is dollar 1.71. Now, there are two possibilities, the spot rates after a year's time or at the time of the maturity may turn out to be greater than 1.72. In that case, you have gained, because you decided about the price uh, that is 1.72 uh, right at the beginning and the spot rates after the maturity, at the time of maturity turned out to be greater. So, you shelled out less of money. So, you had you, you would gain the forward contract gain and there is a possibility of a forward contract loss, if the if the spot rate of at the time of the maturity works out to be less than the forward rates. So, uh, that is where you make a forward contract loss. You would see that options are better than this if the spot rates turn out to be less than the option rates, you can still uh, uh, trade at a price which is greater than the option prices, greater than equal to the option prices. So, then uh, there are so many questions which are involved. So, if these derivative markets, they are derived from the spot markets. That is why they are called derived uh, derivative markets, forwards, futures, options. If they are indeed used for hedging, then why do not you see lot lots of use of these instruments. And as soon as people talk about these hedging instruments, they use it pejoratively, they, they, they tend to somehow relate this to speculative activity. So, what you can also think is, if these markets were meant to hedge the risk, why is the market, why are the markets not functioning well? Another thing, if you have an SBI account now, you can deal in uh, the currency futures. It is like the forward markets, right, uh, where, wherein uh, there are like uh, uh, you have a maturity period of course, but then there is an organization like the stock markets body like the NSC or uh, the BSC. There, there are organizations which overlook the functioning of the future markets and you can have profits and losses each day. That is how you differ between futures and forward markets. But then from 2008 onwards, the government of India has allowed each one of us to trade in currency futures. Of course, it has to be, it is not direct, it has to be through, uh, uh, through another uh, body which, which is over you. So, you would, you would give your instructions to that body that body would put the money in the currency futures. Okay. So, if you have an account at SBI and you, you want to, you want to see the real functioning, okay, uh, you, you can, you can try that, but of course, you, you have all these parameters which will be involved, you have to look at the interest rates here, there and then when you look at the interest rates, then which interest rates? In India, there are so many interest rates. It is not R, you know, it, the, some bank would have some interest rates, lending rate, borrowing rate, um, the, the open market rates, CRRs, so many. Okay. So, then there are other set of questions. So, research is another another ball game. Okay. Theory is ok, <laughs> but then when it comes to real thing. So, uh, as I said, this is not a complete picture of the forward markets, forwards, futures and derivatives. 
if it was uh, any other course in IME, I think uh, you should join that, because that will give the entire, entire picture of the derivative markets.